When Voyagers 1 and 2 launched 46 years ago in 1977, they each carried on their sides a golden record. This can be considered the modern equivalent of the message in a bottle, only this one is set adrift in the ocean of space. As Carl Sagan noted, the record will be played only if there are advanced spacefaring civilizations in interstellar space. This was not a new idea. These golden records would be the audio version of engraved plaques designed by Sagan and others for Pioneers 10 and 11, launched in 1972 and 1973. Preparing the 12 inch golden records consisted of mastering them in lacquer, cut from copper, then plated in gold. They have a cover that is aluminum. Electroplated upon it is an ultra pure sample of the isotope uranium 238. Uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.468 billion years. The records included the inscription, To the makers of music, all worlds, all times, hand-etched on its surface. Lamination bonding of the golden record would then take place. They were designed to be played at 16 and two-thirds revolutions per minute, allowing for two hours of playtime. In addition to the records, a United States flag would be included. The record was then attached to the Voyager spacecraft. What's engraved on the records? In the upper left-hand corner, as an easily recognized drawing of the phonograph record and the stylus carried with it. The stylus is in the correct position to play the record from the beginning. The drawing indicates that the record should be played from the outside in. Below this drawing is a side view of the record and stylus with a binary number giving the time to play one side of the record, about an hour. The information in the upper right hand portion of the cover is designed to show how pictures are to be constructed from the recorded signals. The top drawing shows the typical signal that occurs at the start of a picture. The picture is made from this signal which traces the picture as a series of vertical lines, similar to ordinary television, in which the picture is a series of horizontal lines. Picture lines one, two, and three are noted in binary numbers and the duration of one of the picture lines, about eight milliseconds, is noted. The drawing immediately below shows how these lines are to be drawn vertically with staggered interlace to give the correct picture rendition. Immediately below this is a drawing of an entire picture raster, showing that there are 512 vertical lines in a complete picture. And immediately below this is a replica of the first picture on the record to permit the recipients to verify that they are decoding the signals correctly. A circle was used in this picture to ensure that the recipients use the correct ratio of horizontal to vertical height in picture reconstruction. The drawing in the lower left-hand corner of the cover is the pulsar map, previously sent as part of the plaques on Pioneers 10 and 11. It shows the location of the solar system with respect to 14 pulsars, whose precise periods are given. The drawing containing two circles in the lower right-hand corner is a drawing of the hydrogen atom in its two lowest states with a connecting line and digit 1 to indicate that the time interval associated with the transition from one state to the other is to be used as the fundamental time scale, both for the time given on the cover and in the decoded pictures. The famous Carl Sagan phrase, pale blue dot, was inspired by this image taken at Sagan's suggestion by Voyager 1 on February 14, 1990. Voyager is still traveling. On August 1, 2012, Voyager 1 crossed into interstellar space. As of April 20, 2023, Voyager 1 is now in over a large constellation straddling the celestial equator. Its name comes from the ancient Greek meaning serpent bearer.
Hello from the children of planet Earth. Hola y saludos a todos. Hardik Abinandan. Konnichiwa. O genki desu ka? Star Trek's V'ger, as it might look centuries from now, maybe. Voyager 1 just left the solar system, and you still can't get cell service at the kitchen table. Thank you for joining me today for this walk through the space vault. I'm Sue Taylor, chief curator for the New Mexico Museum of Space History. Be sure to follow and like us on Facebook and YouTube, and check us out on NM Space Museum. Dot org. Better yet, visit us in person in Alamogordo. You never know what's new at the New Mexico Museum of Space History.